Remember this little DJI LiDAR thing? It was great, but it had its limitations. Well, this new release may well have resolved some, if not all of those issues. This is the DJI Focus Pro, and it enables us to use LiDAR and manual focus in many different ways, in different scenarios, and for different types of video creators, as well as giving us more control over it. But most importantly, we can now use it without the gimbal. The DJI Focus Pro system comes in two different combos, the creator combo and the all-in-one combo. I'm going to show you what this thing can do, how it can benefit you, what problems this may have solved, who is it for, how you can use it in different ways, if it's any good. Is it worth investing in all this extra gear, as well as a few things that I think still need a little bit of tweaking for it to be the best product, hands down, for solo video creators or big production crews. So this is what you get with the creator combo. You get the LiDAR range finder unit which has been upgraded from the previous version you get the focus motor which has also been upgraded the focus pro grip with a full color touchscreen and the carry case I love DJI <laughs> Just everything about DJI, it's just great, you know. And if you go for the all-in-one combo, you get everything that I just mentioned with the addition of the hand unit. You can buy all the parts individually as well, so if you wanted to upgrade your system over time or replace anything, you can. So the way LiDAR used to work is you would have to attach the LiDAR to the top of your camera here and then connect your camera to the gimbal and then you can control it using the screen on this grip here. I know a lot of people prefer going handheld and don't use a gimbal a lot, so so, for those people, the time has come. We no longer have to use the gimbal because... Let me, um... Ooh, it's quite tiring, actually. <laughs> so we now have the focus grip, which is essentially the grip that you have on the gimbal. It's just that part without the gimbal attached, which has got a similar set of controls. You've got the full color touch screen, so you can go into the menu system and change whatever you need to change. You've got a trigger and the dial on the front as well. You've got a record button, so you can actually plug the camera in via USB-C cable to stop and start the recording directly from there. You can attach this to your camera cage using the rosette mount, or if you use a shoulder rig, it's actually got threads above, so you can attach that to your rig and use the controls straight there. So plenty of mounting options that could suit a lot of different style of videographers. Again, it's the same design as all DJI stuff, so it's really comfortable, really easy to navigate the menu system. Just like on the gimbals, they've made it so that you can take the battery grip off and swap it out if you run out of battery. So I've got a spare one here, nice and quick to swap out and change batteries carry on filming. You've got the M button here so that you can quickly switch between manual focus and auto focus. So you've got the focus wheel on the back here which you can switch between controlling focus if you're in manual focus mode or you can change it to control the iris or the zoom which I'm going to tell you more about in a little bit. The new LiDAR system, there's been a few upgrades. Firstly it's got an extended range of 20 meters subject focusing whereas before it was 14 so it's quite a big difference and improved accuracy. So before the old version was 43,200 ranging points, but they've actually almost doubled it to 76,800. So you're gonna get a lot more accuracy with your autofocus. It's gonna pick things up easier and recognize different things in the frame a lot better. Now, as well as human detection, they've actually added vehicle detection now as well, and it works extremely well. Then we have the focus motor. I've not read this anywhere, but it feels like the motors are a lot more sturdy, so it can take the tighter focus throws because some of these lenses that I have, the throws are a little bit tight, but these motors handle it just fine. You can actually store up to 15 lenses in these motors now, whereas before it was only three. It also comes with some preset lenses as well. So you just select which lens you're using, press that and it will calibrate it for you and store it and save it under that name. So a lot faster, smoother workflow. Now you plug the motors in straight from the grip, but you can also power it using a V-mount battery. That's just gonna give you a little bit longer on your battery power. I like the rosette design because that means you can have it set at any angle. The motors actually work really well depending on how you're changing the focus. So if you go a little bit slower, it's gonna adapt to the speed that you're controlling it. And you can set that to your own preference depending on the speed style of thing that you're filming. So you may have noticed that I've got three focus motors attached to this lens and you're probably wondering what is all that 
about. Well, so we've actually got fizz control now. When you're probably wondering what that is, it's not um, Poppy Sweets. It's uh, It stands for Focus, Iris and Zoom. And all you need to do to connect the three motors together is daisy chain them. And they all come with cables. So I'm using a lens here that's completely manual. We've got manual focus, adjustment of the aperture, and we've also got zoom. If you're trying to zoom and you do it handheld, you're gonna get camera shake because you're physically touching the camera or the lens. So to zoom electronically is so much better. Or if you're changing environments, going from inside to outside, you can change the aperture using the dial on the side. And that's really cool. If you're working alone, you can set the LiDAR to autofocus and then change the dial to adjust either the iris or the zoom. So you've got full control over those different things. If you're working with somebody else, like a focus puller, and you've got the hand unit, you can have full control over all three. So either you can adjust the focus or let the LiDAR adjust the focus automatically. Focus puller can pull focus for you, or the zoom and the iris on here. You can adjust everything remotely up to 160 meters, which is, I mean, for me, plenty. I'm just gonna wet me whistle a bit. It's hot in here today. Mm. So you've got the focus wheel on the side, nice large wheel, feels great and you can adjust it to your own preference. So you can have the wheel either being really tight or loose for faster movements. You've got a little thumb slider here and you've got a slider there. Record button, switch to manual or auto focus easily there. We've got a trigger and you can set A and B points. So if you're focusing between two different subjects, you can set those points up. So when you're focusing, you don't go past that point. You've also got a nice touchscreen display which is really clear to see. It's small, but it's got all the information you'd need. Now, you know, in future renditions of this, I think they could change this, maybe have a bigger screen. The sliders are in different positions or more accessible and maybe the same size. So you've got control over both equally, but I really like it. Also for those lefties, maybe they bring out a left-handed version. I don't know, maybe not. Yeah, not great for production costs, is it? Now it's got an LED light on here, but you can turn those off and on. So let me give you a demonstration. I am in manual focus mode. I'm controlling the focus manually using the dial. If I want to, I've got full control of that on the hand unit as well. It's so cool, it's super smooth and it reacts really nicely. But then on the hand grip, I can actually change the dial function to become zoom. So it now, it's now adjusting this second motor. I don't know if you can see that. Right, so the LiDAR is attached. It's in autofocus mode. When I'm moving the camera about, you can see, so I'm not, I'm not touching the motors now, the dial. So you can see it focusing itself. And then I can use this dial to adjust the zoom. So now we've got two things going at the same time. It's awesome. Right, so we're in full manual mode now. And let's say I'm the focus puller. We've got focus on the dial here. We have zoom on the thumb slider. And then we've got iris on the other slider there. So we've got full control. Now, obviously, if you've got the DJI image transmitter, you can plug a monitor in and then attach that to the top of this. And then you've got wireless monitoring and control at the same time. If you don't have the little clip, I don't have the clip at the moment. I'm Hopefully they're sending it me and it's on the way. If you don't, you can just put that on a stand. In addition to being able to switch between fully manual focus and LiDAR autofocus, we now have AMF. That's basically a combination of the two. You can have it in autofocus mode, but take over control manually whenever you want to. It's seamless switching. And there's a few different ways you can use it and a few different scenarios that's gonna come in super helpful. So if I just put it in autofocus now, you can see the LiDAR is focusing for us there you can see that and what it's doing is it's actually moving the focus wheel on the hand unit the first scenario that the amf is really handy is called focus transition so if you're using lidar to focus on a subject automatically you can take control of the focus wheel and adjust the focus to the background or another subject if you want and then if you let go it pings back to the subject that it was focusing on so you've got full control of what you want to focus on there, which I really like. The second use for this is called focus lock. So if you're auto-focusing on a subject, but somebody walks in front, you'll see the LiDAR will adjust to whatever's in front and it does it quite quickly. So that's gonna be distracting. If somebody's walking past like so, you, you don't want that. You're gonna get the focus hunting all the while. Whereas if you hold the dial, nothing happens. So it's locking it in place 
and it's still gonna stay focused on that subject and let go and it resumes back to normal. I think it would be better if you could just press and hold the trigger for it to lock in place and then the motor didn't move at all. That would be great. One of the best features about LiDAR is the LiDAR waveform. It's the best way, in my opinion, to monitor your focus points. Focus peaking is okay, but it's difficult to see exactly what's going on. Whereas using the LiDAR waveform, it's like a top-down view of your focus points. So you can kind of, it's like almost seeing the scene from above. So you can see easily if you need to shift focus forwards or backwards. Now, if you're an experienced focus puller, you're not gonna probably need this or worry about this because you're used to it. You do it day in, day out, and it's become second nature. You can use LiDAR waveform if you have the DJI Highbright monitor, the video transmitter, and the cable hub. There's a video all about that that you can see up here, but basically you just plug that in and then it gives you on the monitor the option for LiDAR waveform. Now with anything that comes with so much technology and so many components, there are gonna be a few points that need a little bit of improvement. But what I'm about to say is in no means intended to say that this doesn't work or you can't use it or it isn't good, because it is great. There's just a few things that I feel like need addressing and if they are and improved upon, it could be the ultimate videographer's product ever. The mounting point for the LiDAR goes on top. We, we can't put a top handle on, so a lot of our handheld capabilities have disappeared straight away. Then the biggest one you may have noticed already, cable management. Maybe they could include smaller length cables so there's not as much excess. It'd be great if you could have the LiDAR waveform without having to plug this cable hub in. There should be just a way that you can transmit that LiDAR waveform onto the monitor without using this. I don't see why not. I mean, obviously there's a reason, but can we do it in the future maybe? Also, while I'm on that, I'd love it if you could get the display from the grip onto the monitor as well something like a little picture in picture that'd be great because if you're away from the camera if you're filming yourself you can't see what mode you're in and you can't see what you're focusing on now i know this isn't for everybody because it's a lot of extra gear to think about and it's a lot of extra money to spend but i would love to know if you would use something like this and if so, how you would use it to help your workflow. And if not, why not? Leave a comment below. But for someone like myself who doesn't ha always have somebody to help me film, this is gonna enable me to have so much more control. And that saves me going back and forth to the camera all the time, checking the exposure, making sure it's framed properly. I can do most of it from this now. So it is great for the solo videographers as well as the big productions. This is well worth the investment in my opinion. Now I've got plenty of videos on this topic coming very soon as well as plenty of videography tutorials to come so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of those. But in the meantime, have a great week and I will see you in the next one.